Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Xiang Feng, and uh, today I'll be talking to you about uh, the overhead of ECU sidecars. This is a joint work with folks at uh, Duke University and ByteDance. First, just a few words about myself. I'm currently a graduate student at University of Washington, uh, where I do research in microservices, storage meshes, and application networking. And this is my email address and personal website in case you want to reach out after the talk. Performance versus functionality trade-off is a key concern for both ECO developers and users. This is a quote I took from the Envoy FAQ page and the performance overhead of Envoy and Istio depends a lot on the features enabled, uh, development environment, and workload characteristics. For example, developers might want to know how to configure Istio given a performance budget, or should I use uh, WebAssembly or Lua to extend my uh, service mesh? To solve this problem today, developers rely on ad hoc manual configuration tuning. They do black box measurements of different configurations and workloads. However, such approach have a key limitation. The configuration space of ECU is huge. For example, you can intercept traffic uh, in different protocols, and there are many ECU and Envoy features you can enable. Workload characteristics like uh, request size and rate also have an impact on the magnitude of the overhead. And to this end, uh, we built Mesh Insight to systematically quantify the ECU sidecar overhead to enable two important use cases. First, uh, we want to help the ECU users to navigate the trade-off between performance and functionality. And also uh, for ECU developers to be able to estimate the impact of their optimization uh, to make informed decisions. We consider two primary measures of overhead in this work, uh, in other words, uh, latency and CPU usage overhead. And we built Mesh inside uh, mostly for sidecar mode, but we believe it can be extended to the ambient mesh that is coming up. And Mesh inside is written in Python, and using it is pretty straightforward. Uh, first, you need to run the offline profiler, which uh, generates performance profiles for Envoy on different platforms. And once you have the uh, profiles for your de development uh, platforms, you can predict the end-to-end -end performance uh, for specific call graphs using the online predictor. And the readme file in the repo has a lot more details. Instead of using a black box approach, we model per cycle overhead based on a decompositional model. The figure on the bottom shows the data path of a request. We break down data paths into uh, several finer grain components. The read system call, and uh, there's three side com components uh, that represent parsing, the filter chain processing, and the baseline processing. And then the write system call, and finally, the inter-process communication between the Envoy and the application. The nice thing about this component is that they're independent from each other, and when you compose them together, they represent the end-to-end -end overhead. And with this per sidecar model, uh, we can go ahead and predict the end-to-end -end overhead. Mesh inside rely on what we call the extended call graph to predict the end-to-end -end overhead. Uh, it captures the service communication pattern, the platform specifications, the sidecar configurations, and workload information. Extended call graphs can be constructed from uh, the distributed tracing or monitoring to uh, like Yeager and Grafana. And finally, given the call graph, uh, the end-to-end -end overhead will just be the summation of all the sidecar overhead in the extended call graph. And for latency, the calculation is only based on the critical path. Okay, let's see how Mesh Insight work in practice. We apply Mesh Insight uh, to a large-scale Alibaba microservice trace to show how overhead vary across different settings. And uh, we conducted the prediction using five configurations. In other words, uh, TCP, HTTP, gRPC, and HTTP and gRPC with set of filters. The figure uh, on the bottom sh here shows the CDF over the predicted end-to-end -end latency overhead. The main takeaway is that the performance overhead can vary by orders of magnitude uh, for different settings. When you look at the P50 value uh, 
of TCP versus gRPC with the set of filters uh, can uh, vary by up to 10x. And different call graphs and endpoints also introduce huge variations. When you look at the overhead uh, of the same configuration, uh, when you compare the P50 versus the tail, which is P99, uh, it can vary by up to 50x. And we have a similar observation uh, for CP usage overhead as well. So these massive variations across different settings is exactly why we need to like mesh inside. So developers and users can learn the overhead of their specific development of interest without actually spending precious time uh, profiling them. With that, I will conclude my talk. Uh, Mesh Inside is available on GitHub, and we also published a paper about Mesh Inside at the symposium of cloud computing uh, last month, and uh, please check out the paper for details. Thanks everyone for listening. I don't think we have time for questions, but... Uh... Yeah, so, uh, we have two minutes for questions. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, I should pull up the slides. Questions? Yes. Can you come to the mic, maybe? So in the overhead graph that you showed, um, how much of it is actual overhead of the sidecar versus how much of it is because of the load, you know, queuing, et cetera? Do you isolate the two or? Uh, right, so the, 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 uh, the graph here shows you uh, the overhead of uh, just a sidecar. So we uh, latency, for latency measurement, we have a very, the load generator operate at very uh, low load. So uh, the overhead is only shows you the service time. It does not include the queuing delay. Uh, so I'm curious, did y'all look at any of the differences relating to things like TLS overhead and not? So one of the things I see a lot is, you know, people install the mesh, they do MTLS, and then they go, whoa, it got way more resource utilization or similar. Uh, and so one of the things that might be interesting is like how much of that is the cost of TLS, regardless yeah. of how it's achieved. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we did not consider TLS in this work, but it's definitely the, the plan to consider in the uh, future plan. Yes. Thanks for the question. Okay, uh, if there's no questions, uh, if you're interested in the work, please come talk to me after that. Yes. Hello, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, then, do you have any um, like solution in your mind to you know uh, utilize the benefit of Envoy, Sidecar, all those stuff, but at the same time optimize the performance? Yeah, the the, uh, the purpose of this work is to uh, you know kind of uh, break down the overhead, uh, see what are the primary contributors to the overhead. But I think. Uh, Previous year in this, in this uh, conference, where there are talks on how to augment data paths, for example, using BPF, and also uh, we're just replacing the IPC with a lighter weight uh, mechanism. And also, uh, I, I think CLM is trying to push the uh, proxy to the kernel to save some uh, system call and context switches overheads. Does the mess inside give any details around uh, the packet size uh, that are trans transferred between the control plane and uh, sidecars? No, it, it, it is only, it focus only on the data paths. So it does not uh, involve any measurement of the control plane and data plane communication. Thanks again.